Hi beautiful people. So I hope you're all staying healthy and happy during this weird time. Um, I haven't made a video in like a year and a half, but I figured why not make another one? It's May. You have to choose what university slash college you want to go to by June 1st, I believe. And I've been getting a lot of questions from people who are looking to go into um, interior design at Ryerson specifically. So I posted on my Instagram a couple of days ago if you had any questions. I compiled together a bunch of questions that people have asked me. So these are frequently asked questions about Ryerson. On my channel, there's already a video. Um, but I'm going to do another one because people continue to ask me questions and I love it. Also, ignore the state of my room. I'm in the middle of redesigning and redecorating it. I will also post a video on that. And in that video, you will see me going through step by step how I redid my room. So you'll see me do floor plans, use Rhino, rendering with V-Ray, um, sourcing materials. Um, building things, finding measurements, all that. So stay tuned. At some points, I don't know why, but the video just disappears and it's just me talking. Um, and the screen's black. So I'm just gonna put like a little video on top of it because it's bothering me that it's black. So just ignore that if it ever happens throughout the video. We're gonna start in the pre-category. So this is before you get into the program. What did you take in high school? In grade 11, I took advanced functions, English, religion, economics, accounting, Italian, physics, tech design, and Cosmo. And then in grade 12, I took advanced functions again. Was advanced functions a grade 11 course? I don't know. I took math in grade 11. Okay, so then I took advanced functions. I took religion. I took world issues. Italian, tech design, did I say English? I had a spare. I feel like I'm missing something. I don't know. Those are the courses I took. But if you want to see what they recommend, go on to ryerson.ca slash arsid slash. I'll link it down below. Um, and they tell you what you should take. They don't tell you, but they give you suggestions about what you should take in high school portfolio interview no for me there was no portfolio interview uh what laptop do you recommend getting okay so when i was going into the program there was nothing on the website that said what laptop to get they just said that you need a laptop um but now they have put recommendations of what laptop you should get um on the website so if you are going to the program and you don't know what laptop to get check the website you can afford a pc i'd recommend getting the one i don't know what it's called i'll insert a picture here um and i'll link it down below if you can afford that i would get it at pcs pcs before macs i love my mac i only know how to use mac i suck at pc but um pc what should i submit in my portfolio um so for me when i applied i applied in 2018 and they had requirements and then like an essay and then optional stuff so you could submit up to 15 art pieces three of them were mandatory things so you had to do like a staircase something like organic so like a leaf or like fruit or something and then a chair and then another mandatory thing was like another piece of artwork so you had to have a minimum of four things and you could have a maximum of 15 i think or it was 12 one of those i submitted four i'll show you what four things i submitted in my portfolio i took a huge risk only submitting four things because people could have submitted 15 things and eight of those things could have been better than my four things but i thought quality over quantity um i was also lazy i also told myself i was going to take a year off so it didn't really matter if i didn't get accepted or not 
if I got declined, I would try again the following year. So that's my chair. Um, that's my staircase, which is a staircase in my house. That's a, um, I think they were like vegetable marrow. And then I did this piece. It was um, like newspaper, oil pastel, um, acrylic paint. I used a bunch of stuff. It was like a mixed medium kind of thing. I don't even know if that's what you call it, but that's what I just called it, so. Honestly, I just think that you should submit whatever you're most confident about. And like I said, quality over quantity, just because they say submit 15 things doesn't mean you should submit 15 things because those 15 things could be a lot worse than someone else's four things. You could submit anything. I think that they like to see variety. Um, I only submitted charcoal on paper and then the painting, the mixed medium um, painting. Um, but if you have like nicely handcrafted models that you can take good photos of, make sure you take good photos. You can get like a roll of paper, roll it out and then put your model on it and take photos of it with nice lighting. Don't do the bed sheet method. Trust me, don't do it. So yeah, you could do nice models. You can do uh, anything like, let's say you made a chair at school, like maybe um, submit a chair you made. Drawings, paintings, collages. It doesn't have to just be stuff like interior design. Like let's say you made like a purse out of recycled materials. Like you could even submit that. Um, I know that would be more targeted towards fashion, but it shows that like you can take something like old and you can reconstruct it. Um, so yeah, I just think like submitting a variety of stuff is good. I'm not gonna tell you what you can, what you should submit, but I will give you like suggestions. And like I said, quality over quantity. Where else did you apply? So I applied to Ryerson for fashion communications, for fashion design. For interior design, I applied to U of T for architecture. I applied to OCAD for industrial design and OCAD for interior design. And then I applied to George Brown for interior design. I applied to Humber for interior design. I got into George Brown and Humber and Ryerson for fashion communication and for interior design. I also didn't submit what was required for them because I really just didn't care. Like I did not care. I had a horrible mindset in grade 12. I was such a bum in grade 12, 11 and 12. Like I, I was such a different person back then. Um, like all I really cared about was like having fun with my friends, like partying and stuff like that. And like in university, like I was a whole different person. Like I did not have a social life and I loved it. Like I did not complain at all that I couldn't go out to the clubs. Yeah, that's where I applied and that's where I got denied. When did you get accepted? So it's kind of hard um, with programs that require a portfolio because um, a lot of your friends are gonna get early acceptances because they don't have to submit a portfolio. So they're all gonna be getting accepted in like February, March and you're just gonna feel so down because you didn't get anything but you have all the way till May 31st, so don't even stress. And if you don't get it this year, you got it next year if you want. Um, I got what was considered early acceptance. Correction, it wasn't early acceptance. I just got the first round of acceptances. For um, my program, I got accepted March 7th. Um, but like I said, don't stress. You have all the way till March, th um, May 31st. I can't draw. Do you think I'll get in? Um, yeah, of course. I can't draw for the life of me, okay? I didn't take art in grade 11 or 12. I took art in grade 10. I did take art in grade 10, but not in grade 11 or 12. Um, I can't draw either. But there's so many other things that you can do if you can't draw. You can make models, you can do stuff on Illustrator, you can make like a house or something on um, Rhino. If you don't know how to use Rhino, maybe I'll post like a little tutorial on how to use Rhino. Um, but I do suggest that if you do get accepted, play around with AutoCAD and Rhino um, because you're gonna need to know how to use it. You can do a 90 day free trial for Rhino and 
for AutoCAD. I think Autodesk is free for students. So if you get your like student number after you accept, you can use that for Autodesk and then you can get a free trial of um, AutoCAD. I'll link all the links to the softwares down below. So I'll link the Autodesk, Autodesk down below and I'll also link um, the free 90 day free trial for Rhino down below as well. Um, I don't think there is something for Illustrator, but if you do have um, Adobe Cloud, play around with Illustrator and Photoshop because those are great softwares and you'll be using them. You'll also learn, so don't worry. If you can't draw, that's okay. I would suggest submitting one thing, like one drawing, OCAD or Ryerson into your design. Um, I'm going to say Ryerson just because I'm in the program and I got denied from OCAD um, and I only really know what Ryerson interior design is like. I don't know what OCAD's interior design program is like because I don't go there and I haven't gone there. Um, also, Ryerson has a reputation for their interior design program. Um, last time I checked, I'm pretty sure Ryerson interior design was ranked top one in Canada and like top 10 in the world, which is really good. Why did you choose Ryerson? I chose Ryerson because I heard about their reputation and like a lot of the really good designers went to Ryerson, like um, Bertie Felix, Brian Gluckstein. There's like a, a handful if you look at uh, Ryerson to Designs graduates. What is uni like? Okay, so only speaking from my program, uni is a lot. I like it better than high school because you decide whether you want to be productive. You decide whether you want to get your work done on time. You decide whether like school is going to be your main priority or not your main priority. And surprisingly, I prioritized school before everything, which in some cases isn't good. I prioritized school before, before health. I prioritized school before family, before friends, before everything. Um, and I did get really sick at one point. Um, so... I would say put your health, mental health, physical health, all that before school, but also put school before social life because what you want to do in the future is going to, like what you do now is going to determine what, how successful you're going to be in the future and like partying isn't and hanging out with your friends all the time isn't and obviously socializing is good, but school's better for me. So what was first year like? First year was a kick in the face. Um, yeah, but if you prioritize and you um, like break down work and like the time that it'll take like realistically, you'll be fine. I would say first year is probably one of the toughest years because you have to adjust, you have to do all this stuff on your own and in design, you can collaborate with people and talk about how to do things, but Let's say like in high school, like if I didn't know what two plus two was, I could ask my friend and my friend would be like, it's four. But in design, it's like you have to create your own thing. So I can't be like, how did you do that? Because the way she did it is the way she did it. If I do it how she did it, then that's plagiarizing. If your design lines up with someone else's design, then there's a problem. My tips for first year prioritize record what you have to do that day and give them realistic um like time increment was second year harder than first year um yes and no second year was harder than first year because obviously the higher you get in the years the harder school is going to be because you're always learning new stuff and it's always going to be harder i mean why would they give you years of school if it's not going to be harder each year yes second year was harder in the sense that the content that I was learning was harder, but I was also used to the schedules. I was used to prioritizing, I was used to putting school first, but the content was a lot harder. And almost everyone was taking six courses per semester. So that's a lot. And studio is six hours a week. So that's 21 hours of school a week. Whereas like 
a regular university student would have 15 hours because they would have five courses and they would be three hours each week but we had six and one of them was six so that's already like pretty hard social life question mark okay social life i had a social life within the studio i would talk to my friends in the studio um i went out probably four times during the year it's not a lifestyle for me i know like people a lot of people at like western and queens and laurier like thursdays and saturdays are like their nights but every night for me is like school 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 and i enjoy it that's just me what are the courses like so you can check all this stuff like i said earlier on ryerson.com slash arsid slash i'll link it down below they give you like the breakdown of every course um per semester per year um so irh is history ird is design dynamics so it's like a hands-on course it's like designed through making so you make models and you learn how to use the workshops so you learn how to use like the bandsaw the sander the drill press um you don't learn how to use the laser cutter if that's what you're wondering but it's um it's not too hard if you are wanting to laser cut in first year you can always ask me or you can always ask anyone in the upper years don't be scared of us we are nice we're all human we were all once in your position we all didn't know how to do things at one point so honestly don't be afraid to ask if someone is rude to you you can ask me i won't be mean i promise so yeah that was ird irc is communication so you learn how to draft by hand and then you learn how to use programs like autocad rhino illustrator those are great programs. Um, maybe I'll post a video on how to do like basic stuff on Rhino. Um, just because Rhino is hard to learn. AutoCAD you can learn in like a couple days, but Rhino takes like a long time. I'm still learning Rhino and I've been using it like every single day. Even during the summer, I'm still trying to learn Rhino. I'm trying to be like Rhino expert over here. And then IRN is studio so that's like your main course studio is your main course studio is like everything compiled to compiled together so like you have to do model making in studio you have to do communications which is like renderings and stuff like that you do in communications class and hand drafting like i said um irt is technology so that's kind of like the physics math part of the program so you learn like building code, you learn um, Ontario building code specifically, you learn um, like dimensions, like proper width of a door, proper width of a hallway, like how to make something structurally sound, like what a interior wall looks like. So that's it for first year. For second year, then we have the same courses. Um, and then third year and fourth year, haven't gone to there yet, but check the website if you want more information on those courses um what's your favorite course i personally like ird and irc i like ird because i design through making i would rather make something a thousand times and fail than spend a week researching how i can do it perfect the first time um because i love using my hands i hate using my brain it's bad i know um I like IRC because I love using the computer, even though it's bad for you. I love using the computer. Um, I like like designing things and then seeing it come to life. So IRC and IRD put together is like, I'll render something on the computer and then I'll bring it to life with my hands. So like, really that's kind of like studio but i don't like doing all that technical kind of stuff i know studio is the most important course but i'm just not a fan <laughs> this one's good how many times did you cry during irn um a ton i have got thick skin but like i said it's school 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 so like the the one like the one thing about school 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 is like you have no time to like let loose breathe like like you know like fix your mental health maybe you do but i don't 
I just always, if I, if everything's done, I'll still spend time on it, trying to like perfect it because that's just me. But yeah, so like it was school, school, school. And then one thing would go wrong. I would just like burst and it always went wrong in studio because like I said, I'm not a fan of studio and I really have to start being a fan of studio. Um, so I cried a lot. I did. Honestly cried more during my crits um, than I did like while I was like doing my stuff. Um, I'm not a crybaby, I swear. I know I'm emotional and I've got thick skin, but like one thing goes wrong and I just like, mm. are you planning on doing co-op or internships through Ryerson? If so, where? So, oh my God, sorry, my foot. Um, so if you didn't already know this, if you haven't looked at the website, even though I suggested looking at it like four times already, you need an internship to graduate. So in fourth year, I believe, there's a course um, where you have to talk about like your internship experience and like working in the field and whatnot. Um, I think, I could be wrong, I think. I don't know. Um, I don't know what the course is called. I don't know if it's like IRP or something. I have no idea. Don't like take my word for this. I'm just talking about what I know. But the website, again, the website tells you so much more than I am. Okay. Check out the website. Um, so yeah, I'm planning on doing co-op internships. So you need, um, 400 internship hours to graduate. Um, and it's not strictly internship. So 10 of those hours have to be volunteering within the school. I have my 10 hours. I um, volunteered at the year in show, which is great. If you want to go to Ryerson for interior design, I suggest going to the year in show. Um, but because of quarantine and this whole pandemic, there is no year in show this year. So follow Y-E-S, ARCID, yes, ARCID, which stands for Year End Show, Ryerson School of Interior Design. Um, Instagram, you'll see um, amazing work. And they they handpick students' work. Um, so not everyone's stuff is featured on there. But yeah, check out their Instagram. It's a great way to be inspired um, and to give you like a little hint, hint, nudge, nudge of like what you could incorporate in your portfolio um, or what you will be doing and, and what you will be doing when you are in the program. So yeah, you need 10 hours of volunteer within Ryerson School of Interior Design and then you need 10 hours of volunteering outside. So um, like working with like a homeless shelter or stuff like that. And then you need 380 internship hours Hi, I'm back. I forgot to mention, you can get some of your hours in retail. So like working at a furniture store, like um, a robotics lab, anything that kind of has to do with um, like design. Once you're in the program, you can talk more with her academic internship coordinator. Um, she's very helpful. Um, so wouldn't worry about that too much if you're looking to apply, but just know that you can get some from retail. All the hours don't have to come from um, working in a firm, but um, there is a limit. I think. If so, where? There's a ton of places that I'm very fond of and like I love their design and I love what they stand for and I love how they research through design. Mason Studios, I want to apply there. I want to apply to Brady Felix. I want to apply to 2x4. I want to apply to Studio AC. Um, I honestly want to look at applying abroad, maybe some places in Dubai. Honestly, anywhere. I want to like expand. I don't want to just stay in what I'm comfortable with, but I also want to make sure that where I'm applying, like I'm actually fond of. I don't want to apply to a place just because I need an internship. I want to apply to somewhere where I like what they stand for. I like what they do. I can relate to what they do. Um, and I know that I'll be an asset to their firm if they do employ me Because um, that's important if you Don't have anything to offer and you're just doing it because you need the hours No, no, honey. No, no. Well That's just me. T 
Do you take classes with other programs? No, we don't. Um, but we do have this thing called a passport. And what it is, is you basically have to like go to lectures. So they do invite um, guest lecturers to come in. We've had a lot of great guest lecturers come in. Um, Molly Hunker was a really good one. If you don't know who she is, you should check her out. I believe her website's like Sports by Molly Hunker. Um, I'll link her thing down below. She was such a good lecturer. I really enjoyed her stuff. Um, Odami, Michael Foring, he was really cool. He, um, his guest lecture was actually like him applying to work here. So what they do is when you want to um, become a professor at our school, what they do is the employee, like future employee will provide a lecture and the class will sit in or not the class, students will sit in and they'll provide like feedback. So if they like the professor, they'll tell the profs like, oh, I liked him, I really liked him, I really liked her, I really think she'll be an asset. So we do have a say in who gets hired, but obviously we're not the reason that they do get hired. Um, the chair will have to decide and the other employees will have to decide, but that's also a really good thing that Ryerson does. Students have input on who will get hired. Um, like I said, we don't decide who gets hired, but we do get to say if we enjoy them or we didn't enjoy them. Um, so yeah, I'll link Michael Foring's website down below too. His firm's Odami, I believe. Also want to work for him if he does hire. Amazing. Literally, his renderings look real. Like, I swear everything he does is real but it's on a computer. Not everything, but a lot of it's like just renderings and I'm gobsmacked. Okay, so what I mentioned about the profs, like future employees coming in, um, like wanting to be hired for RCID, that's what I was told by a professor um, that they want us to go so that we can tell like the chair or other profs like that you really like um, their lecture and you really like what they have to offer and they said that we kind of have like We get to give input. I don't know if that's true. That's what I was told by professor. That's why I mentioned it um, But if it's not true and anyone from Ryerson School of Interior Design is listening to this I'm sorry. That's what profs told me. So that's what I'm repeating um, But if I'm wrong, I just want to apologize. I'm just saying what I was told by other profs. So yeah this is post design school do you think it will be easy to find a job um so like i said earlier in the video um ryerson does have a reputation and i'm not relying on the reputation to get a job because obviously it all depends on the student and your portfolio and how you present yourself um and let's say i'm applying somewhere and they find this youtube video and they think that because i have a youtube channel and because of what I post on social media, they don't want to hire me. Well, then they decide. I'm not saying, like, I'm not going to change who I am or what I stand for um, just so I can get a job. Because if I can't be myself and, like, someone can't accept me for who I am, even in the work field, like, then that's that. I'm not going to change what I do or what I believe in and what I post and what I think is good and what I think is bad because I desperately need a job. If I can't land a job with who I am, then I'm not gonna change. Okay, I'm mostly telling me they don't wanna hire me because I'm stupid. Like if it's something like, oh, I don't like her personality or I don't like that, like she posts that she's having fun with her friends. Like if it's stuff like that, I'm not gonna change it. But if it's stuff like, I think she needs to read more books or I think she needs to be more knowledgeable. Obviously, I'm going to change that. Obviously, I want to be like the best version of myself when I'm applying for a job. Obviously, I want to be knowledgeable when I'm applying for a job. Obviously, I want to show that I know a lot about the firm when I'm applying. But if it's stuff like that has to do with me personally, like not book smart or street smart. If it has to do with stuff outside of being book smart and street smart, like, I'm not going to change it because that's who I am. So, yeah, that's what I meant. 
Um, so future employers, if you find this video, hi, how are you? Um, I'm not taking down my videos. I'm not taking down my pictures because I'm worried I won't land a job. I know what I post is suitable and I know what I post is not dangerous to the community and to um, my future jobs. So yeah, um, but sorry, I kind of went off topic. Do you think it'll be easy to find a job? I do. I think that Ryerson does an amazing job um, preparing you to be in the field and for the future i think that what we learn the programs that we learn the profs that we have um and the opportunities that we have are amazing and it really like expands our horizons even just having guest lectures helps so much um there's like travel abroad there's exchange anyways i think it will be pretty not easy obviously it'll be quite challenging to find a job it's always pretty challenging to find a job a job just doesn't come like that you have to work for it that was a really bad snap a job doesn't come like that um you have to work for it and i'm willing to work for it i'm willing to work as hard as i can to land the job that i want so if you're willing to put in the work and the effort and you have a positive mindset then no finding a job won't be hard what can you do with interior design? So you can do a lot with interior design. Um, even just for my second year, like going into first year, I had like such a small, like narrow mindset. I told myself this is gonna be like so easy. Like I'm gonna go into a room and I'll be able to like put the bed here and the mirror there and like add these pillows, add this artwork, like change the wall color. Like I'll be able to make a place look so nice, but like, no. No, 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 no. First of all, that is not interior design. Obviously, some of it is, some of it, a lot of it is not. So there's a really big difference between interior design and interior decorating. Um, I'm gonna post a video on the difference, but right now I'm just gonna say interior design is really closely knit with architecture. Architecture is the facade. So when you're looking at a building from the outside, that's architecture. When you're looking at a building on the inside, that's interior design. And when you're admiring the pillows and the mirrors and the wall colors and the choice of light fixture, that's interior decorating. Um, obviously, there's a lot more detail, but like I said, I'll post a video on that after this. Um, I told myself that it would be like redecorating, kind of. I thought it was redecorating. I didn't think it was like designing like structural stuff. Um, so you can do a lot with it. Honestly, you can branch out to furniture design, you can do set design, um, you can do residential, commercial, um, retail, hospitality, you can do anything with interior design, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, obviously where you can do it depends because in Ontario, you're a Rito certified. Yeah, you can do a lot. You don't have to stay in interior design. You like we learn like industrial design. Like there's a furniture course um, at Ryerson. This program has opened my eyes like so much more, um, and I'm so happy about that. Um, so yeah. The possibilities honestly are endless like you learn so much more than just like design you learn like about like it's like a science like you learn about like how humans functions human behavior and how it relates to stuff so honestly possibilities are endless you can do anything with interior design um what do you want to go into so i don't know i'm i still don't know and I have two years to figure that out. I actually have all the time in the world to figure that out. I can do anything. I want to do it all. And I also don't know if I want to do it all. Are you worried about finding a job? I already answered that kind of. I'm not worried because I know that I'm willing to put in the work and whatever it takes to land a job that I want. Um, so I'm not worried.
no if you guys do have any other questions comment them down below i will be answering them um i will also link my instagram down below if you want to shoot me a dm or ask me any questions i will answer you don't be scared i'm not a mean person i won't be mean comment down below video ideas that you guys want to see if you guys want me to do like a little rhino tutorial video i can do that let me know um like i said earlier in the video i will be posting a redesign and redecorating video of my room i will also be posting a video explaining the difference between interior design and interior decorating um so yeah i hope this gives you guys clarity um thank you so much for watching like i said i'm not an expert i'm only telling you what i know um so don't take my word for everything if you do have specific questions check the ryerson link down below because they do have um information on their website but yeah thank you so much for watching um like this video subscribe i will be posting more because i have the time in quarantine and yeah thanks for watching bye beautiful people